Hello, everybody. During this session, we're going to go through a company overview summary and also a high level uh, platform overview, going over some of the technical capabilities that um, Vitria's platform offers. So Vitria is a software and services company, and we're headquartered here in Sunnyvale, California. We have offices in Europe, in Spain, and in the UK, and we have some other offices in Japan and Brazil. So really, we're a global uh, company. Uh, we were founded in 1994. Our specialization is that uh, it's mainly software and services, and our software platform helps our pro uh, partners and clients build reusable, composable, and real-time analytics solutions with real-time automations. And this type of solution can be built as a turnkey solution, which can be white labeled uh, to an end customer. So really how we see it is that our partners take charge of their own destiny using this platform. Um, we believe that this helps our customers and partners improve the economics of building real time analytics solutions and real time analytics and automation services offerings. And this is done by making it faster and because it's more composable, it's easier to adjust or, or change and really reduces the time to delivery. Uh, we have a services team which helps our customers and partners become self-sufficient. And this includes uh, you know, uh, working together on a joint project or, and or providing uh, training uh, on our platform tools. We have a number of key verticals that we have worked in, uh, telecom being one, IoT, energy and utilities has been big for us. Uh, we have uh, a lot of smart meter, meter analytics solution deals, uh, and they're mainly management by exception and automated resolution uh, uh, solutions leveraging analytics. Another key vertical is also supply chain and connected transport. So um, we typically use this to you know, portray how Vitria helps its clients and customers. Um, and really, you know, one key, key thing we'd like to highlight is our platform is neutral to what the subject of interest is. And so that wh whether it's a thing, that being a transformer, a cell phone, or a base station, or a person, and that could be a sensor on a person, uh, or a tracking device, or a process or transaction, or all of the above together. Uh, the platform has the capability to ingest the data from a variety of data sources and to correlate these events uh, and data to provide context and to process the analytics models continuously and trigger actions. And you know, we, we've seen that uh, in, for example, the smart meter use case where it's a thing, we've increased uptime, we've reduced the number of breaks or improved maintenance costs. When it comes to, to people, sometimes it's um, you know, real-time analytics on customers or employee behaviors and really flagging potential opportunities to make a sale or flagging maybe some sort of exception. And so one of our use cases, for example, with a very large uh, telecom provider in the UK was uh, tracking uh, the movement of customers and flagging who uh, most likely is going to leave the country to provide a uh, roaming offer uh, from a marketing standpoint. So uh, we typically use this as a de dis depiction uh, to describe the high level uh, capabilities of our platform. And so Vitria has a platform for the creation of real-time analytics solutions and services which involve widgets, views, uh, collaborative solutions with input forms and workflows and automations uh, with data input capabilities. And so one of the things that I'd like to highlight is the fact that a lot of these solutions are not only monitoring solutions. They don't only just flag anomalies or uh, run uh, uh, operationalized uh, algorithms, but also there is an element of action and input. So if you 
if the requirement is that the solution needs to flag an exception and also provide the user the ability to put some input, some feedback, or to close a ticket in the case if it was a ticket, or to send a message to a vendor if it's a vendor-related exception. Our platform has that capability and has that capability to talk to other enterprise systems seamlessly. And so this, this PISA diagram shows that we have a collectively exhaustive list of everything one needs to create solutions and control towers for all manner of use cases across uh, industry verticals. And you know, on the bottom left, you see the capabilities to do streaming ingestion from uh, uh, IoT communications and protocols. So we have all the diff different connectors and adapters necessary for that. We can talk back and forth to a data warehouse or a data lake, and that could be, you know, a vanilla HDFS, or it could be a proprietary technology like a Cloudera. But we're agnostic to that. At the heart of the solution is the analytics engine, which you see here in the middle, which is the unified analytics engine. And so uh, we have uh, two technologies that uh, uh, run this analytics engine. One is a CEP-based, which is complex event processing, and one uh, which runs on Spark. And so uh, here uh, they can be leveraged to deploy these models. And both these uh, engines are built typically using uh, drag and drop uh, model-driven visual tools. And you know, um, from a visual analytics perspective, we have our own uh, dashboard builder, which is a, a tool that will allow you to build HTML-based visualizations. Uh, you can use that if uh, you have your own visualization uh, technology. Uh, uh, you know, we could use that too. So um, I think one one thing to highlight is that the fact that all of these tools or these elements are based on tools that are that can run standalone, that work together really well, but at the same time can work with other technologies. So here I'm gonna go through a little bit of a technical overview. So the streaming analytics pipeline here we're showing really portrays the different elements of the solution or a service. So it's kind of a double click on uh, uh, the, the previous pizza, pizza diagram. But this is more showing the how and, and how, how these different tools are working together to uh, really result in this analytics pipeline as we call it. So the first step is the ingestion. And so the ingestion is done at volume and at speed. And we have the capabilities to ingest all manner of data sources and event streams. And we have uh, a tool, uh, it's called Stream Builder, that has all these different adapters uh, that will allow you to, to, to ingest, filter, uh, uh, you know, flag some exceptions when it comes to um, uh, errors in the data stream. The second step, uh, we find that you know, a lot of the events that you ingest, especially in IoT use cases, are typically not enough for analytics. And so there is a need for enrichment. So here, we can enrich it with context, as event data is usually not enough. Usually, the enrichment is you know, about the customer, about the machine, or about the location, etc. The third step, um, we are bringing information which could be from outside your organization or outside your customer's organization, which could be relevant uh, 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 to the data. And so uh, one example here would be weather data. So a lot of times, in conjunction with your internal data source, weather data or an RSS feed is very important to uh, enrich the data stream and give it uh, more situational intelligence about what's happening in the out outside world because a lot of this data is really impacting uh, the use case. The fourth uh, part is the predictive analytics. And so here, after we have enriched the data stream, we can now leverage our other tools, uh, analytics data flow being one of them, to apply analytics on them. And so a data scientist here can import or build uh, uh, an analytics model and then operationalize them on streaming data at speed and at scale using our tools. And the next step um, is the 
prescriptive analytics. And so here, uh, one of the key things is leveraging, uh, after we have predicted all these anomalies or exceptions, one can build another model which predicts the most likely solution either by automated rules engine or by resolution predictions. And so these are other models that are root cause analysis based uh, on the exceptions that have been predicted and will identify the next, next best, best action. The sixth and the final step here would be the uh, implementation of intelligent actions. And that will be done leveraging our BPMN tools uh, based on the predictions and the identified best actions. And so really this whole process is running really fast in real, near real time. So next, uh, I'm going to highlight just some of the key capabilities, uh, and I'll focus on a couple of relevant uh, capabilities to our partners and, and customers. So one of the key things that we have found particularly useful uh, to our customers is the model-driven development. So everything that Vitria has built since the company's inception in 1994 has been model-driven. And the focus has always been on providing tools where developers can build robust solutions, whether they are integration solutions or streaming analytics solutions. And so some of the key highlights is be able to accomplish uh, this with a graphical development environment. Uh, the time to delivery is shorter, reuse is easy, and the adjustment is more easy. And we find that this tackles one of the key issues our partners face when trying to build bespoke solutions or when trying to customize or adjust a solution or service quickly uh, with little overhead and lead time. So all these model-driven solutions are web-based and can be implemented on-prem or in the cloud, so they are cloud-ready. And within each tool, a developer can interactively debug and validate what they have developed. The second uh, point we wanted to highlight is the advanced in-memory windows. And so with interacting with our customers and partners, we have found that when it comes to time series data ingestion, um, or when it comes to uh, uh, ingesting uh, data in IoT and uh, streams of data, that time series analysis is a core need, especially for streaming data. Um, and so we have made sure that our tools have some of the key capabilities to manage in-memory time series computations to allow you to do time series and geospatial analysis. Uh, some of these capabilities we have brought over from our CEP uh, technologies uh, to our Spark-based tools. Uh, the third, the third um, key capability I wanted to highlight is the KPI computations. And so, again, in IoT, we have found that there is a need to build KPIs based on dimensions or dimensional analysis, or by computing metrics and deploying them as part of our uh, open data architecture. And so we have tools that make it easy to configure KPIs uh, on these metric strings. And the last but not least uh, point is the analytics uh, model uh, operation Opera I'm messing that up, but being able to operationalize uh, models. And so here, uh, the key capability is the ability to import models and operationalize them in a streaming context. So some of these capabilities are, you know, invoking uh, the MLlib library in Spark, which is the machine learning library and it can be invoked on uh, a stream of data and operationalized. Other capabilities are importing PMML models, accessing ML libraries uh, uh, in R. And so this can be done both on batch data or it could be done on uh, streaming data. So next is um, a little bit of a double click on the different components in our platform. So as mentioned before, we have a suite of web-based tools, which are both for developers and analysts. So on the left-hand side, you see that uh, we have the graphical web-based drag and drop composable tools, the analytic data flow on the top, which allows you to develop analytics models, invoke machine learning and operationalize algorithms on streaming data or on batch. 
The ones below um, are the dashboard builder tools, which is also a drag and drop visualization tool where operational dashboards and control towers can be built. And uh, this also includes uh, the integration of forms where end users of these solutions can interact with the solution and input data or feedback as needed. Now for action, uh, we have the BPM builder uh, where action can be invoked based on the analytics results. And the last uh, one on the left uh, is the integration of existing sources. And so we have uh, tools to integrate filter, disparate data sources, and event flows, whether it's from internal or, ex or external systems. So all these tools are web-based and all are cloud-ready and interact seamless seamlessly together uh, while running standalone with other non-native Vitria components or with open source components. In the middle, we have our analytics engine where analytics from the analytics data flow are run in batch or in streaming on big data footprints like HDFS or Hive and leveraging a Spark infrastructure. So associated with all of this is the concept of the open data architecture. As all of the data and resources are available for other tools, both Vitria native ones and external ones. So for example, from a visualization standpoint, you can use uh, your own uh, proprietary visualization or read off the, and read off the results of uh, the analytics produced by analytics data flow. So anything generated is made available uh, to our and other tools to access these resources. We also uh, have developed a query service. So no matter how many models you have running, you have access to that data. And the, uh, this uh, query service is on demand and uh, provides access to that data using standard JDBC or REST calls. On the right, uh, we have a set of visualization tools to build operational dashboards. For a lot of our clients, uh, when we have done streaming use cases, uh, they have been in an operational context. So these tools produce HTML-based dashboards where users can interact and view uh, input uh, data, view and input data seamlessly. Um, we also have a, an exploration tool, a visual exploration tool. Uh, here the user can explore the data and identify you know, some key metrics or dimensions and also uh, explore the analytics results. And so this kind of uh, tries to paint the whole picture of how a turnkey solution is used and how the different components are running, how you have, uh, you know, from the data ingest portion, all the streaming sources, whether it's Kafka or Sockets, uh, MQTT, or the different types of sources coming in, uh, running through the, uh, the uh, running all the analytics and machine learning on top of them using model-driven um, uh, composable tools, and then finally visualizing them, taking action, and interacting with the data and talking back to it, allowing the user to uh, uh, take action. So thank you very much for listening to our session and uh, please let us know if you have any questions.